How you doing guys? Big Mac Dance School here with another Mortal Realms video for you. So come, join me as I delve betwixt the pages of issue 16. First off, I want to say a massive thank you to Mr. Adam Edgar. He's not an immortal sponsor on my Patreon. However, he has provided me with continued and consistent support, pledging at the Metboy level regularly, and enabling me to buy numerous issues of the magazine. So, with all that in mind, Adam, I dub thee an honorary immortal sponsor. Now on to the issue, and what we get with it. It's a little tricky this week. The sprue we get is one from the Soul Wars starter set. Uh, for Age of Sigma. I think there are eight sprues in the box in total, but I don't have that box so I can't be certain. Assuming there are eight sprues in total, the miniatures we get this week can be valued at £11.87.5. Uh, £11.88, let's just call it 12 quid. So we're going to be saving around £4 compared to buying the Soul Wars box direct from Games Workshop. As well as the Secretors and Castigators we get this week, we also discover the Celestial Vindicators and learn more new rules to play through. Turning to the first page, we jump straight into the lore, learning that the Celestial Vindicators are vengeance given form. Their hearts burn with hatred for chaos that knows no bounds. It is said that to witness them in battle is to see a hurricane of Sigmarite break upon the enemy. We also get to learn their war cry. We fight. We kill. We win. Arrogant. Prideful. Boastful. Three things I've come to associate with Stormcast Eternals. I've been listening to Sacrosanct and other stories on the Black Library audio app and the first two stories you hear in that book are Stormcast Heavy. The more I learn about them, the more I grow to hate them. They're pompous, arrogant and boastful like I've already said. Most are ignorant of what life might be like for mortals across the realms. To me it seems like Sigmar took these warriors, cleansed them of their humanity and replaced it with a false sense of duty and loyalty to him, their God King. The righteous sense of nobility that they're imbued with is a fallacy. They're nothing but demons in shining plain. I just can't quite get my head around how they're portrayed as the good guys. There's not much to like about them in my view. Anyway, where were we? Chambers of Renown of the Celestial Vindicators. We've got the Bladestorm, Wrathsworn and War Beasts. Specialties, possibly the least characterful answer here, Warrior Chambers. That's the specialties. I've got a feeling they're trying to give them a Black Templar sort of vibe when they say that the Warrior Chambers are the specialties. Um, but the way they try to tell you that, it, it's lacking something. It's like going into a specialist ice cream parlour and the proprietor looks at you as you walk in and says, Have you tried our vanilla? And gives you the eyebrows. I've not come here to try your vanilla, thanks. I'm looking for something a little more flavourful. Uh, a little spice, a little zing, but no, fair enough, Warrior Chambers are their speciality, so, so be it. Great Heroes, Thostos Bladestorm, sounds like a spicy fella. Autus Drake Hewer, ooh, I bet he's locked the head off a dragon or two. And Theros Soul Warden, he sounds like a good party man, that bloke. Fame Stormkeeps, Thunderheart Bluff, and Fort Scarebrow. The warriors that now fill the ranks of the Celestial Vindicators were once mortal. They prayed to Sigmar while soaked in the blood of their enemies. They did not pray to be saved, avenged or transported to safety, but for the strength to slay their foe. The sixth Stormhost to be founded, they focus their fury by chanting grim war songs and channel their hate that becomes an unquenchable wildfire that consumes them completely. Thostos Bladestorm was once the Lord Celestine of the Bladestorm Chamber. It was he who found Sigmar's famed warhammer, Galmaraz. He was a great hero, eventually slain by Archaon the Everchosen. Archaon's steed, Dorgar, devoured the Lord Celestine's corpse. His body and soul remained trapped in the belly of the beast. The Celestial Vindicators believed the sword to be a sacred item. Many of their number wield it in place of the hammers favoured by other storm hosts. They even worship the Father of Blades, a spiritual entity, supposedly made of steel spirits of twelve runic swords of ancient design. On the next section we get Rise of Wraiths Part 2. In this section we get to learn a little more about Nagash's Mortarks. Let's start with Neferati, shall we? Mortark of Blood, responsible for the spreading corruption amongst mortals. Then there's Manfred von Karstein, the Mortark of Night, a cunning military commander and schemer. Nagash calls upon Manfred when a gory example must be made of his enemies. Archon the Black is next, the Mortark of Sacrament. The only Mortark who Nagash truly trusts, he is often tasked 
with empire building and finding ways to expand the borders of Nagash's realm. Nagash sought a new Mortark though, one to lead the Night Haunt, requiring both loyalty and intelligence from whomsoever would take up this mantle, Nagash was impressed with the psychological effect the Night Haunt had on the superstitious minds of mortals. Eventually, his gaze was drawn to the spectre he had punished centuries ago. In life, Lady Alinda had schemed her way to power before angering Nagash. He took her soul and cursed her to haunt Dolorum forever. To his surprise, when he rediscovered the Veil Lady, she ruled over Dolorum once more, turning it into a realm of terror. Here was a spirit worthy of leading the Night Haunt to war, allowing Nagash to unleash their true potential. On the next page we have... The Realms Fighting Fury with Fury! This issue we get a short story about the Celestial Vindicators. After reading this I came to realise that the fury that consumes the Celestial Vindicators doesn't make them like the Black Templar Space Marine chapter. They're probably more similar to the Blood Angels. When they let the fury consume them, it's akin to the Blood Angels' death company, the way they get overtaken by rage at the death of Sanguinius and the psychic visions again. So they, it consumes them completely and they channel that into fury on the battlefield. They want nothing more than to slay the enemy. The story follows Liberator, Fulgar Splinter Shield, and the part he played in the assault on the Chaos Stronghold, the Eldritch Fortress. The Eldritch Fortress was built by the Ninth Disciple of Zeech, and is shrouded in powerful magic. It is even capable of striking out at those who assault its towering walls. Then we come to the how to build and how to paint sections. It's six pages all together. Uh, the paint section even gets you started on some of the finer details on the Stormcasts, on the models we already have in our collections. Delving into darkness. Xandria Zobalt still seeks the weapon she's been after for the past few weeks, months even. Finally, she's made it into the tomb and can feel the weapon close by. Unfortunately for her though, the Briar Queen returns with her trusty thorns to attempt to prevent the Knight in Cantor from obtaining her magical objective. Over the course of this playthrough section, we learn yet more rules about measuring range. I know what you're thinking, we learned about range last week, um, but this week's slightly different as we're measuring range in close combat too. We get some handy wound markers and combat gauges on the inside back cover that enable us to do this with ease. We also get a few more updated war scrolls and that's pretty much it for this issue. Let's remind ourselves what's coming in issue 17 of the Mac. The Dreadside Harridans! The ugly models that I was slagging off a couple of weeks ago. You may remember. Then in issue 18 we're getting... Two Paints! Led Belcher and Dry Bark to be precise, but we're also getting a large battle map. Just how large, we'll have to wait and see. Come back in about four weeks and we can find out together. Before you go, don't forget to give the video a like if you've enjoyed it. Any questions you've got, you can ask in the comments below. There's a button here for you to subscribe if you've not already done so, and a Patreon link here if you'd like to support the channel. There's also a couple of videos here for you to check out at your leisure. Thanks very much for watching guys, and I'll see you on the battlefield.